Oh well. Alrighty. Let's slowly get into things, otherwise we'll burn up on impact. <sighs> All right. So, today's monster. Um, I don't know. All right. <coughs> In the event that I actually have the energy to stay awake to upload these to YouTube. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to another episode or another some sort of talk show. I am Tyler and I am joined once again by the awesome Even. Hi, Even. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> um, today we pick up our D and D bestiary with the Al Mirage. Um, crazy. Rabbit, unicorn, a rabbicorn, a unicorn. <laughs> um, I guess it could technically be a un a yunny. <laughs> That's disgusting. Don't say that. <laughs> we don't talk about the yunny. <laughs> um, so I. When I started, when I started my my side of the, and it's not really a challenge and it's not really a project. But when I started my side of the work, um, I I was just not in the mood to really be like, all right, I'm gonna figure out like the anatomy of the California jackrabbit, and I'm gonna get like all the head angles. So everything is like egg shapes and oval shapes and I was like my biggest challenge is probably going to be the fur because I could probably hide a lot of sins under a good particle system and I believe that there are a lot of other 3D artists out there that that thought crosses their mind in their professional work, but then they sit there and they go, nah, I gotta actually do the shapes. But this is what the this is what the end product could look like if your favorite professional um, decided to go with that train of thought. <laughs> if I could just cheat and hide it underneath all the fur. It looks like the, the the mats that people have outside of their house every once in a while to wipe your feet on. Yeah, are, like super scratchy. The the dirt clod kicker. <laughs> <laughs> that's its technical name. I don't know. That's what I've seen them for. Um, I guess they're in, they're sold in snowy areas too. Um. Yeah. So. I tried to, cause in the in the image on D and D Beyond, the um, oh, my memory was so you know that you know that um, stereotypical like warriors challenge where they, you know, they're they're given a scenery and then they're supposed to like remember it in their head and then try to like paint it like as a perfect replica and such. Sure. I never understood that that depiction in stories, but um, when I saw the reference on D&D Beyond and then I came into the program, for some reason, the image that stayed in my head was that it had like the, um, it had raggedy, like floppy terrier like ears, like as far as the, um, the hair on the ears were. Like it was, you know, like that kind of like floppy and uh, like terrier dog like. But now that I look back at it, that's not what it looks like at all. <laughs> In fact, it has like a weird like horseshoe head of like 
fluffier fur than what's on its like head space area and the ears are actually quite trim so that was a mistake <laughs> well not a mistake this is my Al mirage dang it it's my magic it's my magic <laughs> right who's gonna tell you otherwise i've seen there's some older depictions of it where the horn is like actually if this is like your uh little bunny body uh, the horn is more curved like that there's oh, a yeah. it's kind of strange like not terrible um so when we get down to the like oh yeah this is my interpretation it is. That, that, what you had just had on the screen looked like a crazy um, rhinoceros beetle. <laughs> yeah. Crazy fuzzy rhinoceros beetles. Actually, rhino beetles have little fuzzies. Usually they're on their legs. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can... So I'll just add detail and just possibly ruin what I already have. Um, and we'll see what you come up with. We sure will. I don't even really know what I want to create with this. I'm at a, like a standstill and I think I got thrown off my game by coming here and realizing like, oh, I changed all my brushes. <laughs> But I think what's what's really striking me about this, and like I don't know, it's strange to think of, is they say in the in the book that they first appears in in fifth edition of Tomb of Annihilation that it can be uh, a, a a familiar. You can use the find familiar spell. You're like relatively local to this region. And I think that's kind of neat and strange. What the heck? But this is not like a. It's bigger than almost all other of the familiars that you can find, which I think is very amusing. Strange. You know what? I need a reference of a crazy bunny. But it's like, all right, so D and D categories is that you're like your small creature oh, on every sphere. Your... Again? Oh, sorry. I'm just figuring out why my um, my dough. I'm gonna call them dough splotches um, are appearing on all of my spheres, and um, I just realized that it's not because. It's not because of that, it's because it's isolating the original texture that I put in, not the um, not the sphere itself. So, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you were saying something about a cra you need to find a crazy bunny. They're larger than most other familiars. They are. Then Just, you yeah. changed topic. I think you changed topic, or you, you transitioned into another topic from there, but I don't remember what it was. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know. But I, was just, I think it was, it was strange that they're so large. They're larger than all other familiars. The only one that's also in a, that small category is an octopus. Everything else is like tiny or smaller. Like in that small category, that's the size of like average dogs. This is huge. This is larger than most all rabbits that one would think of. It's weird. Bunnies fight weird. <laughs>
You know, it's not often that D and D Beyond does this, but it's weird that they did it for this creature, where it's just the first, the very first sentence of its description is an Al Mirage, quote, uh, parentheses pronounced Al Mirage, <laughs> is a large, timid rabbit with a one foot long spiral horn emerging from its forehead. Not unlike the uni the horn of a unicorn. If driven to attack, it tries to spear enemies with its horn. Which is weird, because that's not really what... Like, that's a, that's a really different fight tactic than what I've seen, like, our rabbits do. Usually they try yeah. to keep their head really far away from whatever it is, and they try to, like, kick and do the weird little, like... Like, the, the I don't want to get hit, but I'm going to try to slap you slap. Mm -hmm. No, it's very, very different. But horses do relatively the same. They kind of bite at each other. They kind of kick at each other. But they do like a try to get away from each other and do that. Like I'm gonna throw my legs about business. So for for my program, um, when I what I do end up finally getting around to like coloring and texturing and stuff, I sometimes want to just be lazy and just be like, okay, base color, um, eyedropper, you know, whatever that is. But it doesn't mm -hmm. work correctly. It doesn't work the way that I want it to work because the eyedropper also factors in the light sources that I have, the the shade, like the, the shades that the, blah, 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 the shading that exists within the area. So it's just like, it, it makes me not be lazy. <laughs> it laughs mm -hmm. at me when I try to be lazy. It reminds me of a uh, Google, like, drive things like Google Documents that if you're like you try to use copy and paste or like the edit copy and paste, it tells you how to use the like the shortcuts. So it's like you it's it's like very specific, like nope, use the shortcut buttons. Don't just go to the top and go edit paste. So I think it's like an, a very strange way to handle it. But it's teaching people. governing just from the outlines your al mirage is a lot more festive it's a lot more um like it should be like on a holiday greeting card or something i was bored with just like a dump I don't know if I like this, so I'm going to store it over to the side. I feel like there's different, different all mirage that I could be making that would be more fun. This body color, right? And then maybe I do just need to make a dump. That's a weird sentence. I'm sorry, internet. It doesn't work the way I thought it would. Um, oh, 
Yo. Well, let's just make new materials then. For all these things. Yeah, maybe. Head color. Does the El Mirage even show up as the creature in the adventure? I don't know what you're talking about. So, what like, in the Tomb of Annihilation, like, it exists as, like, a little demigod thing that you can interact with, but does it actually, is, like, the actual creature exist? Yes. <laughs> to interact um, with on that, in that, as written in that book? Not in any significant way, which is unfortunate, but... But it is written in there, and it does, like, I'm pretty sure that it's, like, random encounter things that you can find and see. It's just, you encounter Al Mirage. <laughs> little fanfare. Yeah, that's what's actually, it's horn. It doesn't. <laughs> Like, it's that kind of horn. Uh... Here we go. That Al Mirage looks like it's going to gore you. I enjoy it. Good bun buns. I think I should have spent some more time reading. I did find some things just, I don't know, just now when we were looking. And I was trying to figure out, like, what am I going to draw? What does this thing look like? I was saying that this does date back further than just 5th edition. But I don't know what that entails. So I'm kind of curious at what, it, what other uses it's had besides just, like, it's a strange version of stuff that exists here. Um, I wonder what it tastes like. Uh. It's kind of sad, honestly, how how often that's a thought that I have when it comes to animals. Like, oh, that's pretty. Oh, that is a cool horn. I wonder what that tastes like. I wonder what its fur tastes like. And it's so exploitive of the creatures itself. It's considered a garden variety animal. Jeez. That means in the Feywild, they're just everywhere. It's kind of cool. <laughs> El Mirage are usually timid creatures, considered stupid and unpredictable by some. However, El Mirage were also fearless. You know, I remember a couple people saying that Fearless and stupid go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. A day at the races. A 
A Day at the Race is an adventure module set in the Forgotten Realms using the Dungeon Dragons 5th edition rule set. Who is part of the Tomb of Annihilations? Blah blah blah. So how does the Al Mirage make an appearance in here? Dang it, how dare you tell me that it that, that happens and you don't tell me whatever. I guess it's something you can bet on, because it looks like all the creatures that they list in here are like relatively run run centric creatures. Mm. Run centric. <laughs> Well, except for the ankylosaur zombie <laughs> and the flail snail. Well, flail snail can teleport, can't it? I thought it could. Oh, that's terrible. I hope not. <laughs> like once a day. It's like a once a day thing. Once a day, if you can encourage this creature to win, it does. <laughs> well, nope, guess not. I guess we just lost sight of it for like three turns and it moved. <laughs> So, I know your group played in the Tomb of Annihilation and all of that. So, um, did you guys ever run into it besides just the god? The Almirage, Anyone no. make mention of it? I think it's it's a shame in that module. Uh, I guess it's like it depends on how you like to play. But personally, I always get super jazzed and excited about this like concept of travel and traveling. So it would be more natural, and I would want to have that in my game or like see a creature. Uh, and that would be pretty cool and exciting. I don't know. Don't know if any of my other players would really care. Yeah, there's a lot of things that like this. It just falls into the um, length. It just falls in under the weird conundrum of like, what does the DM find interesting versus what do the players find interesting? You know, and then who like what do you like what do you focus on because the players might not find it interesting simply because they don't know about it so if the dm brings it in because he's interested in it then maybe the players might find that interesting or if the dm knows that the players are interested in something and they haven't seen it yet then he can you know not bring in what he's interested in and instead focus on trying to find a cohesive way of bringing in something that the players are interested in Mm -hmm. The Almirage is one of those kind of niche creatures where it's like, yeah, I mean, it's it's cute and it could have some interesting interaction if your players are really like role play centric. But other than that, it's, you know, it's like every other familiar in D&D, &D, you know, it's just kind of there. <laughs> God forbid that the player tries to use it in battle because then it's just it's there. But now it's now it takes up a turn. <laughs> Silly, on that person that you posted last time, uh, or one of the times that we were here talking about them, you uh, about interesting ways you could change monsters and stuff to make it more Witcher esque. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure they did an interesting video on like a wizard character that they made. Uh, it was like it was like a wizard gnome, and what they did is they cast like. Uh, find familiar, and they had Al, Al Mirage, and it was not that it's specific to the Al Mirage, but 
what they did with like to make find familiar helpful is they focused all the spells that they learned off of like touch spells and then they like hid in the backpack of like the paladin <laughs> goliath uh so that but, uh and it would just spend its turn just chill uh the, the uh, the wizard would spend their turn just hiding in the the backpack, um, but would like telepathically control the rabbit to move around and start doing stuff. <laughs> so it was like a it was a strange strange choice of I'm like sure this is a very specific kind of build you've decided to make, uh, but I think if you play along long enough you're pretty guilty of doing that at some point anyhow well yeah i mean if you're if you're interested enough to try to figure out all like the bs that the wizard has then i mean you're bound to run into that um into that strangeness that is like well what's the point you know what is the what is the game point of this of this function you know i can i can I can close my eyes off and use my creature's eyes, you know, but why would I do that if it's an octopus <laughs> or something, you know? So it's really cool when players, you know, come up with not only just like in the moment game reasons to use those features, but like actual like character traits that rely on those things. So like, um, I forget the guy who played him, but there was a guy that played a a blind dude and the way that he saw the world was through his familiar mm -hmm. <clears throat> so like he was only technically blind but not effectively blind yeah as long as the familiar was there that's neat mm, that might have been too much that was too much eh, it's all right no, that was too much. <laughs> Whenever I end up doing like particle systems and like doing all this stuff with hair and fluid stuff, um, it reminds me of this one dude who was a. Um, I don't know if he was a if he was an in-betweener, but he definitely did like the some of the key artists and he was one of the I think he was like one of the main animators in um Cats Don't Dance. And okay. uh Yeah, he was he went on this he went on this long praise that I was just like, yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's ev like of um the particles the, the particles simulator like simulating artists and the especially back then when it was still like all hand drawn so like you know when you know when all everything that was fantasia was like all right so sure we've got the character artists that are doing you know the demon coming out of the mountain and all the you know all the little people running around in the in the town but who's going to do the fire you know who's going to do the who's going to do the spirits and all the, you know all the little all the little particle stuff um and so whenever i do fur and stuff like that I, it always goes back to that where it's like oh my god there was like an entire team of people that were go okay so how does fur work <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so and i got my uh, my first um my first taste of that was when i was doing this um that 2d animation with the um the canine skull crunching down on the on the sign as like a voodoo kind of thing mm -hmm. and it was such an existential question to ask myself okay so how does wood break <laughs> And, like, back in the day, and still it's a relevant thing nowadays, uh, a lot of artists would just take videos of those things then watch them in slow motion and get, like, little little captures of, you know, what is, what is that whole process? 
Yeah, so you could it. watch it slow. I mean, that's the technically the advent of um, movies. Uh, there was a bet. People wanted uh, a couple of rich people wanted to know if or, uh, if all four horses' feet leave the ground when they're in a full gallop. <laughs> but nobody could really see because like, horses move really quick. So they're like, you know what? If we send up a bunch of uh, of cameras with trip wires, we could do this. And then they realize, like, wait, we could put all these together and it makes movie. But going in reverse is that, that that point of knowledge and learning of like, oh, okay, this stuff. And help us. Dang it. I have too much fur. I should, have made, I should have made a second particle system. Or a third particle system for the neck fluff. Instead of trying to just do what I have on the head. That's disappointing. Alright, so I'm not gonna <laughs> do this. Alright, well, uh, this allows me to show how I do particle systems then. My horrible, horrible method of doing particle systems. So what I do is I click on the thing that I want to stick a particle system on. I go over to the little particle tab, particle tab, particle tab. Got to click on the particle tab. And then you get <laughs> two... particle tab with dumbass songs. <laughs> then you get two different like paths that you can go. You can go to emitter. So I can make this I can make this egg of a head sweat some kind of a shape. Or I can give it hair. And when you click on hair, it generally gives you this sea urchin type thing. And that's all cool and all, but I don't want a sea urchin type thing. So I'm going to click advanced just because I like to see all my options, even though I don't use like 80% of them. Um, if you want the hair to be a little more thick and dense, you come all the way down. I mean, you can increase the number of what is emitted, but... Um, you know, your computer might also crash. So you come all the way down here to children. Come all the way down here to chillin'. And then you can go to simple, and that's fine. But, you know, you get these weirdness. So if you want more, you can always go to interpolated. And then you get this nice, crazy floof ball. And then you can come back up here to hair length under emission and you can jump all shove that all the way down so the length on the body that i have is 0.16 and i think i had it at 0.8 actually 0 0.08 was what i originally had the head at um and that doesn't look floofy enough because i actually did increase the number Oops, not O1. Bam. And then we can display amount fitty. There we go. Look at that. Now he's a fuzzball once again. <laughs> and then we can just, you know, leave the head alone. <sighs> but I want to texture paint, but at the same time, I don't want to texture paint. <laughs> um in the sense of I could make a secondary particle system and have it only activate around the base of the head and the neck area. But what that involves me doing is weight painting the section out and then that becomes a vertex group. And now it, and then the more I talk, the more it sounds like I'm just casting spells in <laughs> my lair. Let's come <laughs> back over here to your fluffy boy. I don't know. Um, oh, I never transitioned over to my scene anyway, so it was always on your fluffy boy. <laughs> as it should be. Well, <laughs> the one time I can do something with confidence 
<laughs> and I just get shot down like that? <laughs> uh... Don't get to bully anywhere else, so... <laughs> Where if I'm I don't, take get, it, if, if I don't get to bully on the playground, then I get to bull. Then I get to cyber bully. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way how it goes now. So your ears are very jackrabbity, but the head to me feels a lot more like a like generic domesticated. Rabbit. I think it's a little bit. bit. I think it's the Joseph like Floof. Piecing things together, trying to make it feel a little bit more, more wild, more something else that's not just, just rabbit. <laughs> But some some things. I don't know what's off this time. Oops. That feels very different from all the other like sketches that I've been doing um, throughout the week. It's a it's something that I'm working on right now that's different from the other other weeks. Is that I am. I'm using my iPad as a second display, which is a little bit, a little bit something. I don't know, don't know what to say about it. Like I can tell that it's easier for me to see a little bit where my tip of my pen's going, but in that same respect. The control is a little, a little strange. <laughs> I did a mistake. <laughs> it looks like it, like it has a little sailor map. That's you can't or a sailor hat. Sorry. See, this is how it was supposed to be two weeks ago, but no, for some reason, just didn't want me to do stuff. Um, for some reason, at this angle, I'm getting real, like, Carl vibes from, um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I'm not completely sure why I'm getting Carl vibes. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Saying that, like, you could possibly, if we're thinking about Aqua Teen Hunger Force, think about, like, a uh, milkshake as a little <laughs> straw coming out of its head. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's the eyes and the ear hair. <laughs> Maybe. Like, the eye placement, for some reason, that strikes me more of, like, a Carl than it does a milkshake. Hey, did anyone ever say that your ear hair... Reminds me of something. <laughs> familiar. It's got just like one of those familiar vibes. Like it. Yeah. I got me one of them familiar vibes, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, we definitely can't get like the octave of it, but man, it's been a while. That was a beautiful, <laughs> stupid, disgusting show. I want to do a I want to do a a VR segment that's kind of has that sort of 
co- like that sort of like dry conversational comedy to it that every once in a while just like has these little peaks of like escalation and then like you know you have like a frylock or something that comes into the scene and just kind of like smooths everything out again <laughs> or what was the um what was the name of the show where everything was like like it felt stupid low budget like 2d animation but like there was like the kid and like the blue I guess it was like a onesie or something and then you had like the coach that was in like a green everyone was in like a onesie or something but like Mm -hmm. you had the coach that was in the red the kid that was in the blue um it was weird seeing the coach turn into like bob from bob's burger and being more okay with him (laughs) yes you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about but i don't know yeah and then also him being you know what? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that show start or end really, because I I only really saw that show on when it was like stupid late at night. I was like maybe eleven or eight years old, and it felt like a fever dream. You know, as well as it was like I wake up from like the middle of sleeping, I see that it was on, and I'd watch like maybe like two minutes of it, and then sort of like drift back to sleep. <laughs> What was it called? It was called... But also for a very long time, Trigun was also in that same venue where it's like I'd never see it begin or end. I just kind of see like the middle action point and then like sleep took me again. (laughs) You know what? Honestly, damned if I remember what it was called. Uh, and that one I probably watched a lot of. It's going to come to us. It'll get back to us eventually. Figure it out. Well, if we go to Bob's Burgers, and then we go to IMBD, and then we find the voice actor, and then we go through his, go through his boring. photography. Boring. <laughs> it's boring, but this is how this is how journalism works. You find one lead and you follow it through until you find your answer. They're boring. I'll <laughs> I'll keep it to myself, and you can you can struggle with not remembering. <laughs> But also, I want to get to brainstorming um, storylines that would use the El Mirage. And with this hanging on my mind, it's difficult. Storylines that would use an El Mirage. I like... I want to say that it'd be kind of funny if a fairy lord was having Al Mirage collect important things by skewering them. <laughs> but like, you know, fairies wanting very specific and strange things, being very awkward. So there's like a random case of like so many of these Al Mirage appearing out of nowhere, running through and like trying to like hook like little keys and things off of people by stabbing them and then running off. <laughs> uh, the start of your story, it, it like starts with like a random like character. You're stabbed in the leg. Crap! Ah! You, you look and it's funny with a large horn on it runs away. Dangling from the tip of its horn is your grandfather's locket. <laughs> ah, crap! <laughs> no! the same issue that I'm having with the ears. So I haven't Hold I haven't it. been able to figure this out because I haven't really done much with it with like mirrored objects. I guess what I should do is I should just apply the mirror and then it might be better. But I don't want to do that. Um 
So whenever I try to apply the particle system to a mirrored object, it's like okay for one object, but then for the mirrored object, it's like a completely different array of stuff. So it's no longer it's no longer mirrored technically. <laughs> really, uh. really frustrates me. Um, because then that means that I have to like apply I have to apply the mirror. So now there are two separate technically entities and then I have to go into them and actually like physically separate their data points from each other so that now they're actually two separate like object objects and then I have to apply the particle system to both objects individually which is this is the process that I did with the ears <laughs> and now that I'm seeing that I have to do that with the legs too I'm gonna leave the legs barren just so that people can see what it would look like if I didn't add fur. <laughs> Just in case somebody wanted to skin rabbit. <laughs> it's this is the this is the summertime Al Mirage. It uses a glamour to temporarily remove its fur on its arms and legs. <laughs> Maybe you can have like a really nasty story of a war between a mirage season or cockatrice season. <laughs> I think the cockatrice wins, but the cockatrice is dumb. I'm surprised at how low of a CR it is and how like immediately deadly it is. You mean how it's an excuse for DMs to make characters? Or force players to make new characters? <laughs> uh, I guess so. Or to really make the cleric feel useful. Hurry up, Jim! I'm failing. I'm failing my what is it? Constitution saving throws. I'm failing my throws. Cast your stupid restoration. Also, it gives restoration a better usage because it's like. If I stop it before it happens, then I don't have to gain, like, 30 levels and then cast Greater Restoration. Let's see. So, my All Mirage story would be... I'm trying to think of a better one, because right now, the only thing that I can think of is, like, a weird... Like a weird, like it would be such a toss away story that I wouldn't, I would never put, it would be something that they would hear from like the bard in the tavern, but they would never experience it themselves where it's like a Balto-esque story where it's like they need to find seven all mirage to pull a sleigh or something. <laughs> mm. but, they, but they can't because they keep bamfing everywhere. <laughs> Um. Oh, bam. Do they? No, they don't. They wouldn't. But like, they might be in an area where like fairies keep moving them places, so it's hard to like locate them. Plus, apparently, they're supposed to be like stupid good diggers. It seems like it'd be hard for them to really get a good dig on with their like claws, because the horn would be in the way. So they'd have yeah. to like. Yeah. Uh, like, reach in with their back feet and, like, scoop things out. You know, it's weird how most most mythological things that involve a rabbit are either, like, superfluous details or they don't make sense in either, like, a lore sense or in a, like, functional sense. But when you take those same aspects and you apply them to, like, you know in this case like the unicorn for example like it's like well yeah i mean that that would be crazy like horses are already pretty intimidating and then you shove something on there that can spear you i mean that's even scarier um but you know like the easter rabbit for example like that that's just weird like why and then the jackalope i don't even think it like does anything interesting it's just a it's just a, a jackrabbit that has antlers for some reason. Like, does it have any special properties? <laughs> Sometimes they say that its fur is impervious to bullets. Wow. What a... 
What a what a what a nineteenth century <laughs> what a nineteenth century mythological creature. <laughs> we'll, we'll die from everything else, but guns are worthless. <laughs> um, I guess that's why. No, nah, I'm not gonna go there. Um, and then this thing. <laughs> right? so it's, no, we're not going there. And then this thing, you know, it's supposed to be a really good digger, but like you said, the horn, like the horn, it could easily imagine the horn getting in the way, unless it just like shoves its nose straight down so the horn kind of breaks the dirt, and then it just like blindly scratches above it. And just hopes that it's going in the correct, like, direction. Very yeah, trendy. no, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Terrible or, digger. concurrently, and this is more of a cartoonish example of, like, example of how it could dig, but consider, it is a creature that exists in the Fae, so it could have very cartoonish actions about it. It jumps up, right points its <laughs> head straight down and just corkscrews its way because apparently in all iterations of what this all of what an all mirage is the spiral horn has always been has always existed so if it's an excellent digger and it has this weird horn that could potentially get in the way then it just drills its way through places <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I buy it. Sure, why not? <laughs> That's it. We figured it out. Um, cause yeah, it's really kind of disappointing that it doesn't have any other like magical properties about it. Like, if it like, it would be cool if it had like. Um, a bunch of, um, what do they call those? Um, utility cantrips? Like, you know, it can, like, focus and use a utility cantrip through its horn. Like, it can do Disguise Self, or it can do, um... Detect Carrots. Detect, <laughs> yeah. What the heck are... What are the cantrips? I don't even know anymore. Um... Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> my mistake. Cantrip. Grasp of death. <laughs> what a cantrip, right? Um, blade ward. <laughs> Green flame blade. I like that one. <laughs> no, just the utility ones. Dang it. That's utility. That's like, how I cook my beans. Oh. <laughs> well, right. in that case, not flame, not green flame blade, but create bonfire would be a funny one. Because can I you imagine? Can you imagine this like, like this butthole El Mirage kind of comes like does that little like, like the little like front leg front leg hop thing front leg front leg hop thing up to your like campsite sneaks up up to you and then puts a bonfire under under your butt could do ki dancing lights could do druid craft you know mm -hmm. i don't even think that would be like game breaking or change the the challenge rating of the already kind of weak all mirage you know it just add a little more flavor and a little more fey fey essence to Zit all mirage. Does that really exist? Quite common in the Feywild. Yeah. So maybe passing through passing through that that gateway from the Feywild into this area kind of like takes away all of their magical specialness. But in the Feywild, like a DM should definitely consider giving them utilitarian cantrips that they can just cast from their horn. I think, I don't know. Again, this would probably have to be something that it would be the DM 
doing more, but I think a decent like story or something could be like the need for alchemically an Al Mirage horn or the Al Mirage itself or the horn. It is like, since it's possibly naturally from a, from the Feywild, it could theoretically you like you could use it as like a, a component to open up a doorway to the Feywild. I think that uh, it would also be interesting to need to capture an Al Mirage and then use its horn like a key. I mean, obviously, yeah. <laughs> so you'd have to go through the challenge of trying to capture an Al Mirage, and you could have a bunch of other like third-party individuals trying to mess it up and make it harder for you, like fairies bamfing them away and other things trying to steal them. And then you have I mean, to try to. I would just have a druid that's like, no, this is the only one that lives here. That's also true. <laughs> The next, the very, the very next, the closest all mirage that you can get to is a, what do they call that? A plane shift away. And then you have to try to come back and keep your memories. So it's easier if you just get this one. Um, and also the lock doesn't work unless the all mirage is alive. So then you have to do this whole husbandry thing. And then that forces your players to actually use one of the most underused things, which is animal handling. So, anyways, um, Al Mirage has a lot of uses, but it's it's one of those. I think it's one of those creatures that it's difficult to like shoehorn in. <laughs> Are you giving him blood? <laughs> I mean, if it just likes to run headlong into battle, <laughs> fearlessly. The other thing too I think is. You come across a hole go covered with blood, <laughs> about the size of like a dog. <laughs> you hear something. The other thing too to consider is um, I don't know. I, I also haven't seen too many of these, but that's because these might end up being super lame. But if you write it well, it could be fun and interesting. But using getting an it's not and it's also not written in the lore. But using an almirage is like kind of like a truffle pig to like seek out like a magical mushroom or something a magical beetroot in a field of beetroots only one of them is magical and the almirage can seek it out with its horn <laughs> um like the dm would have to con like con contrive some kind of like a mini game which i don't have the patience to do right now but it probably wouldn't be too hard. But it would also be an interesting challenge to like make a mini game within your D and D game to have this Al Mirage play hide and seek with a oh, what do they call those? A mandrake. That would be interesting too. Then you can mm -hmm. introduce a mandrake into the game, and I don't think I've ever. I don't even know if that exists in D and D. Is that a thing? Not that I've seen too much. Man, Drake. Uh. Oh, I guess a mandrake is not is an actual root in D and D. It's not a creature that is also a root. It's a. Mm. It is a. It is a component to make a homunculus. Shaping a mixture of clay, ash, mandrake root, and blood. Then one can channel rare ritual magic to create a faithful, squirrel-sized companion. <laughs> wow. Um, another thing, too, is... And again, this is kind of a throwaway mission, but your... Your depiction of an Al of an Al Mirage is a uh, um awesome. I know. 
saving, not saving, but like discovering an underground all mirage fighting ring. And then as players, they can decide to either join it and go GTA on the game, or they can try to liberate <laughs> and, you know, try to be good Samaritans and try to end the cruelty of this underground all mirage fighting ring. I like that. I'd be totally down. <laughs> That's like always my character. And then there's like four other people in the party like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. We'll get money off them first and then you can free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, oh. let, let's bet a few rounds and then we'll liberate them. <laughs> How about I cast Polymorph on you and you get to fight in there? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, damn it. Yeah, see? So, I mean, as much as I thought it was such a throwaway little thing, it could be a cool little side mission that your your players could have such free reign in, you know? The druid could, you could shape change. Oh, can he shape change into that? Yeah. It'd be, I think it's just a beast. A beast. I don't know. <laughs> a beast. Um, but yeah, like the druid could like your your pl like the players could take part in the fighting ring. <laughs> um, your players could liberate the fighting ring. Your players could try to become the kingpins of the fighting ring. It is a beast. All right, I thought it was a magical thing, but that's kind of my speciest view of most things that quote unquote come from the Feywild. It's true. It's kinda I don't know. You set themselves up to be something else. <laughs> what does this look like if I render this image? Render image. Oh, he's so fluffy. Except his ears look like they're wet. <laughs> um, how do I show that version of it? So yeah, um, those would be my semi-lame but obviously room for improvement stories featuring an El Mirage and that's how I would change the El Mirage is by giving them the ability to do non-lethal utilitarian cantrips for haha -ha purposes and also to make them a little more a little more conniving a little more give them a little more oomph for that horn um We've heard some of how you would use an El Mirage, even if they were half-hearted. But how would you change an El Mirage to make it a little more, just a little more interesting? Um, <laughs> um I would give it wings. <laughs> wing, singular. One wing, one more. <laughs> That's it. Enjoy. <laughs> One uh, one horn. Fallen angel. I don't know. To come back to that one. This... Well, once again, we've reached that time where we've come to our hour. So just let me know when you are tired of adding details. I'm going to put some shades on the darker portions of the red give it some definition oh that kind of shades I thought you were going to put like thug life shades on them <laughs> with the blood does it really need thug life shades uh, I'll do it in post if you don't <laughs> monster thank you <laughs> uh 
damn it, now I have to upload the other two episodes before I do this one, and then I'll put Thug Life Shades. Look, if I do that, if I do my homework and I finally upload those other things, even though it takes me like three hours to do, I think I deserve the right to, to edit, <laughs> to edit Thug Life Shades. <laughs> I deserve the right to edit that shit. <laughs> what a strange statement. Dude, if I had if I had editors working for me for my videos, that's what that's the stipulation that I would give them. If you sat if you if you s are willing to sit through my bullshit, you have the right <laughs> to edit all the dumb shit that you want into that video as long as the main story is preserved. <laughs> that that seems like a bad, bad power to give them. True, but most of the people, I, I usually don't give that power to people that I don't trust. So hopefully in the future, there's some good comedians out there that I can trust. So any of you that end up watching this, if you want to edit and you have reasonable trustworthiness, but <laughs> conniving intentions, just lie to my face and then... <laughs> Just lie to my face, yeah. <laughs> make good friends with me, and then just do whatever the crap you want later. Well, be too lazy to fire you. I need an editor. <laughs> Thug life. <laughs> At this angle, it looks like the um, my almirage has a like a goatee, like a little like a, like the smallest of chin beards. <laughs> Man, I hate doing that. Are there any circumstances in which you would have an all mirage in your game speak? Speak? Yes. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think speaking animals is, or like having just speaking animals is. I'm a silly. Not my cup of tea. I guess we'll say that. Uh, so if it was a mission in which you had to find a scientist or like a druid or something, and they find out that he, you know, did something wrong and changed himself into an almirage, you would have them do a like a pantomime kind of a thing or try to yeah. non-verbally try to communicate that I'm no longer a humanoid. I am now this small, tiny, cute beast creature. No, he's not tiny. How big is he? Medium? Small. Dog-sized. Creature. <laughs> <laughs> creature. I think so. I mean, especially since they have access to spells like uh, speak to animals. Like, I want to reward whatever character decides to prepare that spell. <laughs> or the one-off, like, barbarian or, like, that has that ability, but, like, always gets overshadowed by everyone else in the group and then never feels like I'm a natural, but, like, they're naturalists. Yeah, that's that hinges on a lot though, because there have been a lot of little like challenges that I've tried to throw at you guys. Because I would have thought that um, the wizard would have taken X Y Z, or the warlock would have had X Y Z, or the rare times that we had like a cleric or something that would have had you know another set of X Y Z. And I've been like, oh, man, and then, you know, theoretically, if they have this, then it'd be so cool. So I'm going to make this challenge for them. And then they get to be the heroes of it. Put it out there. We start rolling dice. And it turns out he didn't. He either didn't prepare that spell or he never thought to take it. And I sit there and I go. Or the bard is just really vocal. And they're like, ooh, I have jack of all trades. My handle animal. Got a natural 20. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, but nobody in our group ever plays a bard because that's usually taken by me, and I die in the first in, in the first battle. <laughs> so true. now everyone's locked into like warriors, paladins, and warlocks. <laughs> Sit there going, "Oh man." 
I'm kind of happy with the little cutie. Good. Everything's better with blood. <laughs> it added. It added depth. Depth. It added depth. <laughs> I don't know what other superpowers that I'd give this thing. Like, I personally, it, uh, I think it's cute and strange, and it can just exist. I think some things just need to, just need to exist. Yeah. And that I would try to make it strange that, like, you're like, I, I think you need a somebody, somebody to do something to it to make it scary and interesting or unique. Otherwise, Ooh, I appreciate cool storyline. That's another cool storyline. Now that you bring that up, which is um, even though they're more of a Feywild thing, so it's like you know, yay druids and maybe those weird clerics and, but it's like you know, like hags or like darker warlocks could actually like start corrupting them, and then they could be like these little crazy little gremlin things that keep multiplying whenever you try to put fire on them or something <laughs> i like that i like the idea of hags that's i don't know right there especially this one this is a great setup for a pact of the chain fey warlock i could i could dig I think that. that could be a good one <laughs> except the stupid thing like i don't know i helped uh somebody build a a fey warlock pact of the chain and like the find familiar allows you to do touch spells not just any spells through them and like the warlocks hardly have any touch spells <laughs> especially fey ones yeah, and a lot of their touch spells like a lot of their like i'm actually going to take this spell touch spell like come later yeah and those are competing with other spells that are like far superior <laughs> Yeah, Warlock's in a weird spot, I think. They're very cantrip based, so you yeah. gotta do the like the most common thing that I can think of, and they don't even get it is the electric touch cantrip. Is that a cantrip? Mm -hmm. Is that a first level spell? Shocking grasp is a uh, a cantrip. Okay. Yeah. But warlocks don't even get that, so they have to take the like the arcane what is it? The arcane acolyte spell or whatever it is? Arcane yeah, student. Initiate. Arcane initiate. Initiate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Al Mirage. Weird, weird, weird rabbit thing for your weird character. For your weird rabbit. <laughs> Alrighty. Any last uh, any last thoughts? Any last notes? I do want to I do want to point out though that um, the blood around the paw kind of looks a little more like a like a like a stamp seal wax, and so it makes me it makes me try to imagine a wizard trying to find some way to like fashion a um, like a stamp. Or like a seal, so that it just kind of like fits and screws on to the Almirage horn, and so he just <laughs> writes a bunch of like letters and stuff, and then he puts it on a like a lower table next to his ankle or something, and the Almirage is the one that stamps all of them. It's true. Can you see my hand on there? That's weird. I have yeah, head I in can, the book. I can see two hands. Multiple hands. Bunnies need multiple pets. <laughs> I, I don't know, as a terrible human being, and I would probably want it free trade after the thing has died, would want a Almirage Horn Hilted Dagger or sword. Dagger? That would it's only a, well, let me see. It's a foot long, huh? So it's like a standard ruler. Yeah, that would make, I mean, that could make a pretty cool uh, sword. Uh, especially if you like to fight with two hands. Where's, my, where's my cat? <laughs> or it'd be this, a pretty neat spear. I want to put this ruler on my cat's head and see the proportions of like how far that how far that ruler sticks out from the cat's head. Yeah, but a cat's not a cat. I think is like a tiny creature. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Let me see. 
So if I imagine a dog, yeah, I guess that's pretty proportional. Foot long Al Mirage dagger, huh? I mean, that would be mostly like a parry dagger or like s explicit stabby dagger. Because <laughs> I think it'd be very hard to try to sharpen like the, like the double My helix. dagger is called the explicit stabby. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. It could work. It could work. Short sword. Short sword. I don't know. I were, like if we're thinking back to uh, the discussion of creating more nuanced monsters in a Witcher fashion, like maybe a creature that you create, um, like a natural, like predator in the area that all mirage might take up space is like weak to all mirage hordes so you have this interesting choice of trying to control or make deals with all mirage strap the bunny itself to some sort of weapon so you can stab it or to harvest it yourself to make a spear or dagger so that you could take down i don't know a troll thing just but. start play just basically turn D, D into minecraft and just start breeding an army of all mirage so then you can just like throw honey coated carrots at the whatever's weak to all mirage and the all mirage just charge that character <laughs> yeah i like it <laughs> i think that's a good one um then you have a strange other mich mission to find the kind of honey and carrots that they like so you can harness the power of all of your uh, Yeah, I mean that's how that's how you split the party, right? So one half of the party is is in husbandry, just trying to massively produce Al Mirage, and the other half is out in the forest trying to trying to find the tools to make the Al Mirage charge at the at the thing. <laughs> oh man, would I love to be the like the bard that's serenading the rabbits? Can you feel <laughs> the love tonight? Or, like you know, one, Barbarian. It, it was like that. It, it reminds me of that one um, charity stream that you were you were talking about where they had an army of dachshunds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they were oh, fighting what? the dachshunds, weren't they? It wasn't, it wasn't them using the army of dachshunds. No, actually, I, it was like either dachshunds or chihuahuas. Yeah, is it like he was just a dog breeder in town? Because I think they had to play regular farmer-like people, and this guy just had a bunch of dogs. And then somebody donated to the stream, and it was like, or they can be a bunch of dachshunds or chihuahuas. I was like, mm, take it. All right, so. <clears throat> Next week, if and we can meet, technically would be the Al Alseid, A L S E I D, but I do not have that book, so we're skipping it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Me neither, but I don't know because I don't have the material, so we're going to keep going. Um, don't have that book. Oh, maybe I do. Is that a person? <laughs> a person. Nope, I actually do not have that book. So we're skipping. I guess um, that's something that we can look into of actually drawing characters. Mordenkainen's Tome. Ew. No. That one. Sure. <laughs> so there's another creature. So there's a creature of which I actually do have that book. Um, the Amnizu, A M N I Z U, and that's where we get into our fiends and devils. Gross. I guess we did a demon. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of A's that exist that I don't have the book for. <laughs> but we're not doing you, A, A wrong. 
Which one? All right. Well, we could try that out, I guess, if that's what you're down for. What was that the one you were, you were saying? Aaron? Uh, Aaron? Uh, I didn't say. I don't have any suggestions. Oh, because I don't see I'm just Aaron. here to draw dumb stuff. <laughs> Yeah, because we're saving we're saving the Drakes for Drakes, right? Because there is the ambush Drake. Well, I don't know. Again, you keep on flip flopping of like, are we saving Drakes for Drakes? Are we saving demons for demons and uh, devils for devils? Because if we do the Amnizu, then we're working in the devil territory. I guess so. We can save it for the devil area. Yeah, because I got I saw fiend and I was like, well, that's that. Yeah. But it's a devil. Know. Devil is a subcategory of fiend. Um. All right. I guess we have some research to do and some alphabets to relearn. Anarch. Do we care about the Rev Revnica stuff? That's more or less. Um. Nah, that's. Magic. I don't know. I feel like it's like Magic the Gathering. Stuff, right Dragons of Ice Spire Peak. Then we're in a bunch of ancient stuff, which doesn't really count. Construct. Andro Sphinx, but that's under Sphinxes. Animated armor. Um, boop, 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 boop. Yes. Egghead. Animated armor is the next one that I have stuff for. All right. Now we get to figure out what kind of armors we like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hate hard body modeling. And if any of you out there in internet land want to give us suggestions, feel free to tell us what kind of armor we should be making for our animated armor. Yeah, make your well, own. Well, at least you could make suggestions because I can, I can go do things on the fly. And make your own all mirages. Send them over to even at his Instagram handle up on the screen, up over now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that'll about do it. So. See y'all next weekend, hopefully, if um, schedules allow. And I hope to see you during the week for stupid other smaller stuff. All right. Um, even you don't have anything going on that, like, public need to know about, right? Oh, definitely not. You're just doing. You're just doing stuff. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So in that case, um, laters, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Internet.